This is the NFAC, an all-black militia with a mission to defend the black community by any means necessary. We met with him outside of Cincinnati, where he says another new chapter is now in the works. The NFAC stands for the Not Effing Around Coalition. Unbelievable. Literally a day after a blue anon, anti-Trump, Biden-supporting, Syrian-born nut job mass murders 10 white people, MSNBC feels like it's a good idea not to just report on, but to actively promote a racist hate group that wants to secede from the U.S. and start a black-only ethnostate. We're going to get right into that, but first, some breaking news from healthwithdronetech.com. You're not going to believe this, but a new study reveals that tiny fish in the Amazon are able to survive piranha bites. Here's how. The three-striped cory, a small catfish, is able to survive multiple bites from piranhas completely unfazed. The secret lies inside its specialized scales. Science has found that these fish are able to survive piranha bites due to the collagen in their unique scales. Just as collagen is the main protein that protects these fish, it might also quite possibly be the most important protein inside us humans. Collagen is the main protein we need to combat aging, enjoy peak energy, and strengthen our nails and hair. Increasing your collagen intake is the best way to combat aging and appear more youthful. That's why I recommend taking at least one scoop of collagen per day. This product contains research-backed ingredients that promote anti-aging quickly and effectively. Get my favorite multi-collagen for 51% off today by going to www.healthwithdronetech.com or by clicking the link in the description or pinned comment. We'll have a rare inside look at an all-black armed militia, and its stated goal is to defend black people by any means necessary. Wait, wait, what was I just looking at? What the hell is that guy doing? We'll have an inside look at the group, its goals, and why experts say it is very different from the far-right militia groups that are on the rise. Focused on demanding justice for police killings, defending black Americans, and countering far right groups. Wow, a lot of really stupid shit to unpack there. So first off, we have this hacked terrorist supporting host, Craig Melvin, who makes several stupid claims in defense of this openly racist hate group. One, that they're there to defend black people by any means necessary. Defend black people? From who? The vast majority of black people are murdered by other black people. And yes, this trend holds true for all racial groups in this country. However, black on black murder is the highest rate of interracial murder in this country. Pretty significant when you realize we're talking about around 6% of the country. This is all part of Blue Anon's overarching conspiracy theory that white cops and white people are hunting down black people daily. Think I'm wrong? Well, just check out the polling on this with ridiculously high amounts of people believing the conspiracy theory. Now, they believe it for several reasons. Mainly, the media purposely cherry picks stories and blows them up while always ignoring the details of why these police shootings occurred. So if a white cop shoots a black person, no matter what the reason is, it will be reported as a racist, unjustified shooting. It doesn't matter if they were fighting police, shooting at police, trying to run over them or stab them. None of it matters. So those out there that don't know any better, just assume that black people are being gunned down daily for being black. Because of this media cherry picking, they never even hear about white people being shot by police. So it all seems very one-sided and targeted. When you confront them with this fact and show them that that around 200 black people and 400 white people were shot in 2020, they'll point out the higher percentages of black people shot compared to their population size. But inevitably, they will also ignore that black people, and more specifically black men, are more likely to be involved in violent crime, murder, and in fact fighting the police when they're being lawfully detained or arrested. Now just so we're clear here, I'm not making any sort of an argument for why this is. There are lots of factors at play here, and I'm not saying by any means that black people are somehow prone uh, to this sort of behavior. I don't think that's true. And you can actually uh, prove that by just looking at where most of this is occurring in Democrat-run cities on the coast. And the vast majority of it is gang-related. Kevin Melvin knows all of this, but chooses not to inform, but rather to perpetuate the conspiracy theory and paranoia. <laughs> Melvin's second bullshit claim is that the so-called experts say that INFAC, which I kid you not, stands for the not effing around 
coalition is, quote, not the same thing as far-right militia groups that are on the rise. Experts say it is very different from the far-right militia groups. <laughs> Just say it with me. It's, it's different, different when they do it. They are known as the NFAC, an armed all-black militia. You might have seen it protest in Georgia, Kentucky, and Washington, D.C. Yeah, you know, I do remember something about these guys protesting. The sounds of war right here at home. This is the NFAC, an all-black militia. It's a movement started in 2017 by this man, former musician and Army veteran John Grandmaster J. Johnson. Holy fucking shit, that's the dumbest shit I've seen in a long time. Instead of unleashing a torrent of anti-gun outrage, the reporter seems almost excited about it all. A racially exclusive armed militia pushing for an ethno state with a leader named Grandmaster. <laughs> no, I shouldn't say anything. That's probably just my white privilege talking. This is some wholesome stuff. Really, just carry on. Their goals are distinct, focusing on defense with the ultimate goal of a black ethno state. Is violence an option to reach your goals? The United States was built on violence being an option. Violence should be the last option. A response to show they won't be scared or unprotected any longer. Wait a minute here. So MSNBC has no problems with these racist extremists having semi-automatic rifles with bump stocks because they need them to protect themselves from white people. But at the same time, you also support Joe Biden banning so-called assault weapons, which by your own logic will leave these people defenseless from the colorless hordes. Or will they just carve out an exemption for groups like this so that they can fight systemic oppression? That's all I can stomach for this one. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit that like button, share, and subscribe, and I will see you all next time.